Hi, today we are uh, hoping to do a video that shows our technique for installing leaves into a round table. So we've made, we're working on this round table, we're working on the top actually. There's another view of it. And so the table's been split and we've joined the two halves together with table pins here. You can see the table pins here. See that? And they're male and female. And now what we have to do is install six leaves inside of that. So the table is going to eventually have six 12-inch leaves. And um, the process of installing those leaves is uh, what I think we've got a really good system, so I wanted to share it with you. Uh, we've all seen table leaves that you have to they have to be numbered. You have to have this number one, number two, number three, or they're hard to get apart in and out. Well, the system we've got makes them so that you can put them anywhere you want. You can use anywhere from one to five, one, six. And uh, I think it's a really good system. This particular table has a split pedestal because it gets so wide, there's a support leg in the center. And so the split pedestal works. This is, here's a, here's a drawing of what it's gonna look like underneath. So as we're fitting these leaves, two jigs are required. They're both pretty simple. First, there's this one. This is just a piece of hardwood with some accurately drilled holes through the hardwood with some little boards screwed to it so I can clamp it down so it ends up nice and flush with the tabletop every time. This distance is very specific for putting the pins in the middle of the thick top. On the bottom of the jig, there's uh, holes drilled with a Forstner bit that allows the uh, chips to eject as we use it. So the way this jig works is uh, we can put it, well, it drills the holes and this, this is a male side and then when we do the female side the jig s switches over and comes over here and then we drill that way there we know our pins are going to go straight through. The other jig that's important is this here and we'll see how this is used in just a few minutes. So let's start with the leaf over here. So we start by making a center mark on the leaf and then we draw that very carefully. Okay, and then we take, take our jig and now we've decided that this is the female side so I'll put a little F here to match female, and then that means that the male is that side. Okay, so I center this up on here and clamp it. And the reason that the jig is so useful is it's drilled on the drill press using a brad point bit. So the holes going through the jig are very true and, and nice and straight. And so the jig enables us to be able to bore nice straight holes in a precise position each time. So I clamp it on, because you could make a single jig and move it, but then there might be error each time you move it. This way here you get the whole series of holes all with one thing. And it just costs us one little board of hardwood. Okay, now I have a drill bit set up. I have a drill bit set up with a depth stop. Three-eighths drill bit with a depth stop. And I'll drill for the female table pin. Okay, so you see the chips coming out through the slot there? Okay, now what I'm going to do now is probably going to get a scream out of a lot of woodworkers because I take these holes that I've just drilled so accurately and I ream them out with the next size drill bit up. And I've just put a piece of tape on it to mark the depth. But the, what this does is it makes my table pins fit just a little bit loose. And the benefit of fitting a little bit loose is that when we apply finish to the parts, and it, even if we get finish in these holes, then it fits just so. So this is a controlled looseness. 
Okay, now so that's the female side. We'll touch it up with just a little sand. My sanding block is just a piece of MDF with sandpaper wrapped around it, PSA, the, the adhesive sandpaper wrapped around it. And I break the edges, break the bottom edge a little and the top edge a little. Notice I haven't done anything with the ends yet. Okay, now I want to blow this out. So these are nice clean holes, even the being reamed, they're nice and clean. That takes care of the female side. Turn this over. Now we have our M here for male side, so we have to take our jig, flip it over. There's our M for male. Find our center marks. There's our center mark. And clamp it down. Get it just so. So this process, it's a few steps, but once you get in the swing of it, it's pretty fun and it's very reliable. So the jig's made out of a hardwood? Yeah, the jig's, this one here is made out of a piece of hickory left over from an old job. And actually I think these little cleats are bubinga, but uh, it can be any hardwood. Now drill again with the 3 8 bit with the stop, not the oversized bit. Remove the jig. Give it a, just a light sand. A little like dancing. Pull it all out. We're going to put a drip of glue in each one. A second hole? Did you dig those holes bigger? No, no, we, we don't want to ream these out. These are the male holes, okay. and we want them to fit our table pins okay. just nice and tight. All right, perfect. Yeah, so no reaming on these ones. Good question. So we're just putting, a, you know, kind of a, one fat drip inside of each hole. And then we made a little, a little stick of wood with a couple of bandsaw curves in it. This little guy, and he goes down in here and I can use them to spread the glue around without getting it everywhere and that pushes it up around on the edges. And if I need to I can wipe this off. It usually takes a couple holes to need to be wiped. And that enables the pin to slide in nice and smoothly. Yep, yeah, spreads. You don't have a puddle of glue you're fighting down in the bottom of the hole. You know, the hydraulic pressure. Okay, so I like to, I try not to get glue up on the surface. Okay, so that takes care of spreading the glue. We'll give it another quick sand. And I'm not worried about sawdust, a little bit of floury sawdust get down in there because that works like a, a wood flower like you would with epoxy and doesn't hurt the glue joint at all. And the dowels are? The dowels, these are the pins. Uh, the pins are 3 8 bullet pins. And I got them from Amazon. And there's a little glue, groove here so that as we push them down in, the glue, any glue that comes up gets trapped in that glue and it makes for a nice neat hole. So we just push them in to start with. They're a pretty nice fit. It's funny how some are tighter than others. And I made a little block of wood with a notch in it. And this controls so I don't pound it in too far. So that just sets them all right at this very same depth. So now we've prepared the female side and we've prepared the male side and you know I did not break this edge. I should have, my sanded this, I should have broke this edge just a little bit because that razor sharp edge is one thing, it's razor sharp, but it's also delicate. And so you, you got a delicate edge like that, it's easy to put a dent in. And just gently break those edges. Okay, so now we go over to our, our table top. 
over here and you'll, you'll see how this jig's going to come out of use here. Pull it apart. Okay. Come around here and you can see how these things fit together. Now this has never been tried. You just saw it put together. But see how nice that fits together just like that? Here this half. No muss, no fuss, no sanding, no fitting. And what number leaf is this? This is the, this is the sixth leaf. Okay, so now this thing, this, this is just a straight board and it's got a stop here and a stop here so I can push it against these two edges of the table. When I push it against the edge of the table, now I can take my marking knife, come in, inscribe a nice crisp line that I can cut the leaf precisely. And the splines? Oh yeah. So, so you can see here I just marked this and so I can go to the saw and cut this. Something we like to join our boards together with a spline so you see it sticking out here and that, that attaches the boards together really well. So as you come around the table you can see the splines and when this is all sanded and finished this would be a nice little element of, uh, of detail that you'll enjoy. And as it goes around the edge this actually becomes longer because of the angle. So it's a real neat detail. So this little jig helps to mark where to cut this. So now I'll do this on the other edge the same way. Mark it with my marking knife. And there you have it. Now this leaf can be taken out I can trim it on the table saw, sand it, and it will fit precisely in this location or any of the locations. So all six leaves become interchangeable. So this is our process for doing it. And I know there's a lot of good ideas. There's a lot of great woodworkers out there. So if you have a process that you like or, or want to make a comment on it, we'd sure appreciate that. We want to do the best work we can. So thank you for watching today. Wait, John.